This video goes over how to move the small robot and the Roomba in Botball. So right here I have um, written down a bunch of helpful pieces of code that um, all can move the small robot. The Roomba is down here, so I'll go over that later. So first we have the MAV command, uh, I just call it MAV, and that sets a goal velocity in ticks per second. So all this does is it tells the motor how fast to go. So all you do is you put in which motor you want to use, and then you say like a number between 0 and 1500. So a good speed is usually 150 because the motor can go pretty fast. So, and I have examples down here. I will show you how all this works later. Next, we have the motor command, and I do not use this because the battery on the robot is very finicky and it's hard to tell what percent battery it's at. And so it just it isn't as um, consistent as this command right here. So I usually don't use that command. So I won't be going over that one because this one is far superior to that one because it uses ticks. A tick is, it's like degrees, and it's a way to measure how far or in what position the motor is. So imagine a circle, and there are 360 degrees in the circle. That's like the motors here. Imagine a wheel, and there are about 1,500 ticks in that wheel. And so, um, and actually, these commands use that. This one right here, it just uses speed or velocity right here. So, msleep is really important because if you're going to use this command, it just tells the motor to move at a certain speed. It doesn't tell it how long to move. And so this right here, it tells it how long to carry out this command. It's in milliseconds. So you can't just put one or two for one or two seconds. You have to put 1,000 or 2,000 for one or two seconds, but it's in milliseconds. So this is how you know. Uh, an easy way to do it if you're dealing with just one or two seconds is you just take away three zeros and that'll be just one second or two seconds. So GMPC is get motor position counter and all that does is it tells you at what tick position the motor is and this is helpful for debugging if you want to do an uh, if you want to print like here there we go right here um, if you want to print the position of the motor what you can do is you can do GMPC and then you can say say motor zero and it'll print out an integer and so what this will do is when this is run it will print out what position the motor is in and so if you're ever having a problem with the motors then this is just an easy way to debug so keep that in mind MTP move to position MRP move relative position of the two I'd say this one is more helpful and you'll see why so move to position it takes three arguments it takes which motor you're going to be using it takes how fast you want the motor to go and it takes the goal position now the goal position is absolute if you are at say zero ticks in the motor and you want to move to a goal position of 50 it's going to move at this speed until you reach 50. if you're at um, initial tick of 100 and your goal position is 50 then it's going to move down and so this is helpful if you're starting at zero for your ticks because you know you're starting at zero and so you can just move to this goal position the hard thing is that you'll have to reset your ticks every single time you want to use this. And so this is why the move relative position is helpful. Because all you have to do for this is you just um, you say the motor, and then you say how fast you want to move, and then you say how many ticks you want to move. It doesn't matter where you're, in, where you're starting at. It just matters how many you want to go. And... Um, as for ticks, here I have some important notes right here. Ticks 
there are about 1500 ticks in a revolution. So if you want to move the motor all the way around once, then you just set this to 1500 and it'll move this motor at however fast you want around once. The, the wheel will go around once. Um, next is, yes, MAV and MRP. Move at velocity and move relative position. The difference is that the MAV uses time to know how far to go and the move relative position uses ticks. And so they both use speed. And so for this, you'd be moving at a certain speed for a certain amount of time. And for this, you'd be moving at a certain speed until you hit, until you move the amount of ticks you want to. So that makes this more accurate right here. So if you want to move an exact certain distance, then you'd want to use this because all you have to do is figure out how many rotations it is, and then you can figure out the exact amount of ticks. So I have some examples here of what this MAV code looks like and what this move relative position code looks like if you actually wanted to get the robot to move. So right here, we have calling the left motor and we have calling the right motor. So in this case, we're going to call um, the motor zero is the left motor and the motor two is the right motor. And I'm going to use that for all down, wherever I, for this also MRP, zero is always going to be left and two is always going to be right. So right here, I'm calling the left motor and I am saying move at a speed of 150. I'm not saying how long to do it in this right here, I'm just saying move. And then I'm saying the right motor move at the same speed. And so this is going to make it go straight. And if I didn't have that, if I just had that, it would just move on forever until the code ended. But if I have that, that means this is going to go for one second because it's going to do this and then it'll keep on going and it'll just stop to move backward you just negate both of these. So that means it's going to be moving backward at 150 for one and a half seconds, because this is in milliseconds. So you'll have to do the math. Um, this is in one second. This is 1.5 seconds, turning left and turning right. So for turning left, you have to think about which, so this is turning left in place. This is turning right in place. So in order to figure out which motor you need to make go backward, you have to think, okay, so motor zero is on the left. So I have to make it go backwards and the right one to go forwards in order for it to turn left. And so that's why this, um, the left motor is negative. And this is going to be turning left for three seconds. For right, it's just the opposite. This one was negative, now this one's positive. It's gonna turn the other way. This is going to be turning right for 10 seconds. Okay, so now we have the move relative position. So right here, I'm saying the left motor is going to move at a speed of 150 ticks until it reaches 7,500 ticks. Now, right here, I have this number for a specific reason. I decided that I wanted to make the wheel go around five times and so there are 1,500 ticks in one revolution <coughs> times five revolutions in total is that many ticks. And you can see right here, that's five revolutions. So you don't need an M sleep here because this is using ticks. It's just going to do this speed until it reaches this amount, these amount of ticks right here. Next, we have the Roomba. The Roomba is a lot more simple than this up here. It doesn't have the ticks, it just has speed and time. So you say this command, create drive direct, and then you say how much you want to move the left motor, how fast, and how fast you want to move the right motor. It's really simple. And then you say how many milliseconds or seconds you want it to move that speed for. We have an examples right here. I say I want the motor to move at 150 speed for the left motor and for the right motor 
for half a second, because 500 milliseconds is half of a second. Down here, it's going to move backward at this speed, 150, backward for both. At it, This is one-tenth of a second. You just have to do the math for it. This is going to move the left motor backward and the right motor forward, so it's going to turn left for two and a half seconds. And this is going to turn it right because the left motor is going to be going forward, right motor is going to be going backward. This is going to tur be turning right for three-fourths of a second. And the more you use sleep, the faster you get at it. I've been using it a lot, so I'm used to it. So here you have all of the commands. And this is really all you need. I use MAV most of the time because that's just what I've been using for the longest time. But if you really want to get precision driving, then you use this. In the description, I will have a link of the library directly linked to the motors. And if you go to that link, you'll see all these commands and more in the library. So there you go.